Next, shut down just two weeks before Christmas. We asked the company why they closed the longtime Cameron facility now. And too many cyclists killed or injured. Now a local effort to make our roads more bicycle friendly. Plus, it's the Louisiana-based restaurant chain versus the family of a global music icon. We break down this legal dispute on 7 News at 6. It starts now. Now, in High Definition, sponsored by Nissan of Lake Charles. This is 7 News at 6. Hello there, I'm Charlie Haldeman, and for Cynthia Arsenault tonight, just two weeks before Christmas, some Cameron Parish workers receive word their plant is closing. KPLC's Jaron Jordan is live outside the Protein Omega plant with more. Jaron? Yeah, Charlie, and 180 jobs are what's lost here, and losing those many jobs in a community that has already had so much taken from them is devastating, and that's the sense that I'm getting from folks when I'm asking them about their initial reaction to news of this sudden closure of Omega Protein Corporation. It's a company that's been here for decades. Some may remember it as one of the first industries in Cameron. Now, Omega Protein Corporation is the company that produces Omega-3 uh, fish oils as well as protein products that are shipped all over the globe. A company spokesperson tells me that as of yesterday, there were about 180 employees who were employed at this facility in Cameron this morning, all of them, with the exception of about 20, finding out that they no longer have a job. Those 20 will remain employed throughout the next 18 to 24 months overseeing the transitional and closing phase of this process. Now the company says that after their third quarter, which would have been around November 1st, they began reassessing themselves and they say the data showed that they would better be fit by streamlining their Gulf of Mexico operations. So what does that mean? Well it means closing this facility and moving the four of the seven vessels that are here to their other locations. So three will be moved to Abbeville, one will be moved to Moss Point, Mississippi. In a prepared statement, Omega's president and CEO Brett Scholl said, quote, in 2013, we advanced our goal of building a more balanced nutrition company. And while we made a tough strategic decision to close our Cameron facility, we believe this will better position us for future growth as we consolidate operations and reallocate assets in the Gulf to create a more efficient fishing operation, end quote. But, you know, timing is everything. And with just 14 days until Christmas, I asked what was the sense of immediacy and urgency in this closure? The immediate closure, um, you know, Omega Protein's board of directors voted on Friday um, to go ahead with the move and, um, you know, steps were put in place to, to make the move effective um, yesterday. You can imagine they're still dealing with uh, the reality of not being employed. And, Charlie, get this. Last night, this company had their Christmas party. Employees tell me they were given holiday hams and having a good time, and they woke up this morning and find out, found out that they no longer have jobs. Now, the company says that they don't know how many or who will be rehired at other Omega facilities, but they do say that those who are not will be given financial assistance as well as staffing placement opportunities. At your service live in Cameron, Jaron George. KPLC 7 News. Thank you very much, Jaron Jordan. Raising Cane's Restaurants finds itself in a legal dispute with the family of the late reggae legend Bob Marley. It is all over the phrase, One Love. It's an iconic Bob Marley song and the slogan used by Cane's for nearly a decade. The company says it trademarked the phrase back in 2005, but Marley's family says it was registered without their permission. Raising Cane's CEO Todd Graves says his family, or he's tried to work with the family to resolve the dispute. The Marleys want money for damages as well as profits from using the phrase. Graves says he plans to fight the Marleys in court. More Louisiana residents now sign Signed up for health insurance through the troubled federally run online marketplace. Nearly 2,200 people enrolled by the end of November. That's five times as many who signed up during October, the website's first month in operation. A new group with an old message for higher, rather for state lawmakers on higher education costs. The tuition task force wants lawmakers to give up their authority to control college tuition costs so university boards can set tuition rates. And the group wants lawmakers to put limits on the state's free tuition program known as TOPS. The task force says TOPS awards should be a flat amount and not tied to the price of tuition. 
The group of educators and students making up that task force started looking at tuition policy back in October. It will now submit its proposals to lawmakers. If those recommendations sound familiar, they are. Lawmakers have rejected them several times in the past. Big changes in the GED starting January 2nd. The new test will be 100% computer-based, consists of multiple choice and short answer questions rather than the previous grids and essays and have updated the content of the test. But if you were in the middle of practicing or taking the old version, you have until next week to finish that task in the lake area. If they don't meet the deadline, their test scores will not roll over. So if they've taken one or two parts and they haven't um, finished, they'll have to start completely over in January with the new exam, which means they'll have to take all five sections. So we do encourage anyone who started taking the test and had some success or who, who thinks that they're ready to go ahead and give it a try, especially if they've been involved in a program, because they will be starting over from scratch and learning how to take a new exam in the new year. The last dates to take the old test in the area, December 17th and 18th. You can contact the Literacy Council for more details. Turning to weather, Wade Hampton here. We could wake up with some frost tomorrow. Yeah, we saw that this morning in many areas this morning across southwest Louisiana. Temperatures from this morning look like this. Low to mid-30s across the area. And I think it's going to be very similar to that tomorrow morning. Despite some clouds, yes, we did get uh, quite a few clouds around the area again this morning and into the afternoon hours, but temperatures beginning to fall now in the mid to upper 40s across most of the area, but those temperatures will continue a fairly steady drop overnight. There's actually a weak cold front that's going to move through this evening, just reinforcing the cool air that's already in place. But changes come back starting Friday, and it involves rain and we'll let you know if it's going to last into the weekend in a few minutes charlie thank you wade it's now officially crunch time for kplc's community christmas and the salvation army angel tree donation drive kplc's mary wilson is standing by now with an update mary just show your cookies we're getting close to the end of KPLC's Community Christmas in the Salvation Army Angel Tree, but the gifts and the donations keep pouring in. Today we have a very special one from LaBerge Casino Resort, and we have Keith Henson here along with a very special helper today. What's your name? Olivia. Olivia, I think your mouth is full of cookies, and that's actually how you raised this money for us. Yeah, that's right. We were able to uh, make our gingerbread cookies, both the uh, Christmas trees and the snowflakes. We're selling them at lattes and desserts, and all the proceeds were given to the KPLC community Christmas and we're excited it's an amazing time of year for everybody and seeing all these toys and what we're able to do for the community really uh, makes it all worthwhile it's been a lot of fun and if you haven't been out there to get a cookie yet they are absolutely delicious gingerbread cookies and Olivia's wandered off with two I was going to try and get a little uh, a little critique from her I think that she's enjoying them pretty much though I think she likes them she's in all right and there's a beautiful huge gingerbread house out at LaBerge as well yeah it's uh, we made it ourselves our chef Bill Foltz and all of our team put it together it's on display outside of Ember Grill and Wine Bar, and it really is a, a spectacle. So if you want to take pictures, come out and have some family photos, that's the place to come. All right, and you've raised a lot of money so far. Olivia's back. Are you going to tell us how good those cookies are? They're pretty tasty? Yeah. All right, we have a, a thumbs up from her, and so we encourage you to go out and get one as well. Raised a few thousand dollars already. Yeah, two thousand dollars, and uh, we're just excited to keep on going. All right, well, thank you so much, and thank you to everyone that's contributed so far. Back to you. All right, thank you, Mary. You can drop off donations of toys, non-perishable food items at a number of locations between now and December 15th. And you can mail the monetary donations, make them payable to KPLC's Community Christmas, and mail them to our address on your screen. A grassroots moment to make it safer and friendlier to ride a bike in the lake area picks up steam. Locals heard from to uh, the cyclist known as from the Be Kind to Cyclists. It's an organization out of Austin, Texas. KPLC's Teresa Schmidt reports they hope the exchange of ideas is just the beginning. Most avid cyclists have horror stories to share about injuries or near misses while trying to share the road with vehicles. I've seen the ER one too many times and been operated on several times. And so I attended partially because I'm a cycling advocate and I'd like to see the city safer. I'm going to lay my bike down in the middle of the intersection so that the woman didn't hit me. Not only did she not roll down her window, stop, 
ask me if I was okay. Neither did the seven cars behind her. Be kind to cyclist founder Al Bastidas from Austin accepted an invite to speak here, hoping to spread public awareness and make it safer everywhere. What if that cyclist or that person riding a bicycle in front of you is your grandkid, is your son, is your husband, how would you drive? To me, that is changes, puts a different perspective because we, when you ride on a bicycle, we're not extension of a bicycle. We're humans on a bicycle. We are loved by somebody. The group promotes safe public policies and law, such as the one requiring buffers in Louisiana. The local effort includes businessman Brent Lumpkin and the Community Foundation, spearheading the bridge pedestrian bicycle initiative, such as this one in Biloxi. It's a game changer. It's, it's a quality of life. Uh, the community has decided that they want to put an emphasis on the cyclists and on the pedestrians. And, and we have city government, we have parish government, we have state government who are, who are all who are all backers of this now. It's hoped this meeting is just the start of making a safer community for those on foot or two wheels. At your service, Teresa Schmidt, KPLC 7 News. Teresa is posting more of her interviews from today and for links to the Be Kind to Cyclists organization, you can log on to kplctv.com. Still to come, the coyote that caused chaos at a Houston airport today. Plus... This is David Stahl. He was in the U.S. Navy during the latter years of the Cold War. We'll have his story coming up on the Hometown Patriot. A Moss Bluff native who served in the United States Navy is this week's Hometown Patriot. KPLC's John Bridges says David Stahl served in the last days of the Cold War. David Stahl rode through three major hurricanes and took part in several naval rescues in the Atlantic Ocean during his service in the U.S. Navy on board the USS Luce. And they'd rescue uh, down pilots or people from vessels. Uh, we've rescued people that was just walking across flight deck and got hit by jet blast and knocked off aircraft carrier. And we'd have, you know, we'd be running plane guard for the carrier and uh, we'd rescue you know, the people that have been knocked off. Stahl says while his ship never saw a battle during the Cold War, they were always looking for potential threats. We're constantly hunting for submarines, you know, because you never know when something's going to happen or, you know, they're going to try and sneak a peek, you know, to close to our coast. Uh, you know, so we're constantly uh, training, you know, about every six months we'd have to go down around Puerto Rico and stuff to live fire ranges and, and fire missiles and fire guns. Stahl was serving on board the Luce when the hostage crisis broke out in Iran. And they put us off 60 miles off the coast of Libya due to our capabilities of being the guided missile destroyer. And we stayed at the general quarters for 90 days. Uh, every time Libya, their Tripoli at their military base would launch aircraft at us we'd have missile lock on them before they hit breakwater from 60 miles out. David Stahl, this week's Hometown Patriot. At your service in Westlake, John Bridges, KPLC 7 News. Chief Meteorologist Wade Hampton joining us with weather. Rinse and repeat. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, more clouds around again, but thankfully not a repeat of five years ago. You may remember this exactly five years ago. We had a little bit of snowfall, in fact, the most ever in the month of December. I'll show you a few more pictures and talk about our forecast right after this. Now, your pinpoint forecast with Chief Meteorologist Wade Hampton. Well, again, on this date five years ago, we were dealing with a winter wonderland here in southwest Louisiana. Officially, four-tenths of an inch of snow fell in Lake Charles, but areas north of I-10 had anywhere from two to as much as nearly six inches of snow. Thanks to Casey for the picture I showed you before the break from Lake Charles. This one here in the Lake Charles area as well from Haley. There was enough snow to build a little snowman. A mini snowman, but there was enough snow for that. This picture came in from the Ragley area from uh, Tracy. You can see some of the snow that was covering the ground and the horses having to deal with that back in 08. But again, nothing like that outside now. And I've already been asked a few times on Facebook, do I see any snow in our future? The answer to that is no, at least not in the next seven days. Beyond that, it's anyone's guess as to what could happen in the rest of the upcoming winter. Certainly been a crazy one thus far with all the cold and dreary conditions we've seen already a lot here in just this month of December. And tonight, it is going to be chilly either way you look at it, but more changes come in Friday. We'll actually see a warm-up in temperatures, but 
rain chances return as well, and some of that's going to linger into the weekend. Mentioned the clouds, yeah, they returned as well this morning. In fact, starting in this morning and continued through the afternoon hours, and honestly, I think they're going to continue overnight tonight, too. They're actually helping to keep temperatures a little warmer right now, but still think those temperatures will drop tonight. Already down to 44 degrees for Faye Jones in Oakdale. 47 to the airport just down the road from her. Same temperature at Fort Polk. And even at the coast, temperatures just not a lot of variability north to south. Again, that's a factor of all the clouds around keeping temperatures up. But there is a weak cold front just to our north, and that should move through later on this evening. It's not going to make it any colder, but it will reinforce the cool air in place. So temperatures tonight, I still expect low to mid 30s across the area, despite the clouds. In fact, if the clouds would clear, it would likely be even colder than this. But again, I do expect the clouds to stick around. And the water vapor tells us exactly why we have the clouds. They don't show this to you all the time, but it spells it out quite nicely. Anywhere you see gray to especially green shades shows us moisture in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. And we have plenty of that streaming in from the southwest right over top of southwest Louisiana, meaning the clouds are not really going away anytime soon. Future cast shows our weak cold front that I mentioned now over southwest Louisiana. It moves on through, and again, that reinforcing shot of cool air comes in. But the high pressure behind it moves on to the east. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we'll see the high pressure move off to the east. That means a gradual warm-up as we head into Friday. And the next cold front brings another round of rain that starts on Friday, continuing into Saturday. So tonight, partly cloudy, so at least mostly cloudy and very chilly. Temperatures in the 30s. No rain tomorrow, but rain is going to return on Friday by the afternoon when that front approaches. Showers continue into the morning Saturday. Sunday is going to be the better of the two weekend days. The sun will return, so kind of an up and down forecast still. Up and down. All right. Thank you, Wade. Seth Lewis here with Sports. Uh, LSU team from this year looks a lot like a team from a couple of years back. Yeah, from 2005, from their bowl opponent that year to their starting quarterback. But we'll tell you why even their head coach in 05 may be doing something similar. Plus, why McNeese men's basketball had to cancel a home game. All that next in sports. Now, 7 Sports with Seth Lewis. Local first. Will he stay or will he go? The job status of Alabama head coach Nick Saban is the biggest news in college football this week. Multiple reports say that the University of Texas is willing to offer Nick Saban the richest contract in college football history. But there are also reports that Alabama also has a contract extension they've offered to Saban to stay in Tuscaloosa for the rest of his career. Meanwhile, the Longhorns still have their current head coach in Mac Brown, but he's expected to step down by the end of the week. We'll keep you updated on this rapidly unfolding story. And if Nick Saban were to leave Alabama, LSU fans know that it wouldn't be the first time he left a major SEC program. This is video of the last game he coached with the Tigers in 2005 Capital One Bowl against Iowa. It also marks the last time the two programs met as the Tigers and Hawkeyes are set for a collision course in the Outback Bowl. Also in 2005, the Tigers started a dual-threat quarterback in Marcus Randall, very similar to current starter after Zach Mettenberger's injury, Anthony Jennings. He could do that, but... I don't know that uh, I don't know that that's our strength. His skill set is is one that really he's a you know a, a very accurate thrower, and I think he's I think he fits the offense that uh, that Zach was running. Kyle Girls basketball is getting set to begin a three-game homestand against in-state opponents starting tonight when McNeese hosts UL Monroe. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. at Burton Coliseum. The Kyle Girls are looking to stay undefeated at home against a 3-3 three three Lady Warhawks team. McNeese men's basketball only had two home games scheduled before Southland play starts, but now make it one as the Pokes cancel their December 31st game with Dillard. The NCAA regulates that Division I teams like McNeese can only schedule four non-Division I teams in a season, and the Cowboys played an extra non-Division I game in the NIT season tip-off tournament. And here's a special edition of Sports Person of the Week. The 7 Sports Billy Navarre Sports Person of the Week. This week's sports team of the week is the Jennings Bulldogs. The team reached the 3A semifinals for the first time since 1992, which is the last time the school won a state title. The Bulldogs finished the season with a 10-4 record, including an undefeated 4-3A district title. Congrats to the Jennings Bulldogs, our sports team of the week.
And a national finals rodeo update, Shane Hanchi uh, placed second in tie-down roping and is still in first overall, while Casey Martin still holds on to his number one world ranking in steel wrestling. All right, thank you, Seth. Wade has another check of the forecast next. Stay with us. New on Nightcast tonight at 10, new hope for people with serious allergies. Those shots could soon be history. And what led to this ruckus in an apartment over in Parliament overseas? It turned into an all-out brawl. Not an apartment, Parliament. We'll have that story tonight at 10 on Nightcast. Before we go tonight, pilots called for help after they spotted a coyote running loose at Houston's Hobby Airport today. Officials chased him several runways before he eventually escaped under a fence. Witnesses say the coyote looked winded but not hurt. No flights affected by that chase. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But, yeah, very interesting. All right. Well, weather-wise, again, the clouds are around tonight. They will stick around, but it's still going to be chilly. Temperatures in the 30s. We'll actually see a warm-up before the next cold front. It actually moves through Saturday, so temperatures back to the 60s Friday and Saturday, but rain, too. All right. Thank you, Wade. We're back on the air at 10 o'clock or any time. KPLCTV.com. For Seth Lewis, Wade Hampton, and everybody behind the camera, I'm Charlie Haldeman. Have a good night. Now with the KPLC mobile app, you'll never be without KPLC 7 News from KPLCTV.com. It's all in the palm of your hand. Sponsored by Christus St. Patrick Hospital, your partner in wellness.